In this tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to create 3D environments, uh, adding texture, adding lighting, using a block out, uh, just the basics of making a 3D game. Uh, these exact principles I use in my game Twisted Tower and this is how it looks. I feel like it looks pretty cool. And so I'm gonna teach you how we're, we did that, at least the basics of what we did here. Okay, so you wanna go to Package Manager and make sure you've installed Pro Builder in the, from the Unity registry, just type it in, Pro Builder. And we're gonna open up our Pro Builder window. <clears throat> Tools, there it is. Pro Builder window, I'm gonna drag it over here. All right, so if we create a new shape here and I just draw it like this, you notice I have like a flat plane here, which is cool. I can grab the faces here and I can actually extrude them by holding shift like this. Isn't that cool? So you can start to realize, oh, I can make a whole level doing this, right? The problem with this method is that it's random and we're not utilizing a grid size. A grid size is gonna help us Make sure our, our jump height, our move speed, our enemy move speed, our pickups, our ray casts, all of it is linked to the grid size so that the level design is directly linked to the gameplay and they work in tandem. And so your job when you're starting a project is to figure out, do my mechanics work with the grid size? Does my jump height work with the grid size? Does my player move speed work with the grid size? Because we're gonna to snap to that grid. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my Y grid is turned on, okay? I'm also gonna make sure that my snapping is turned on. Now, if you can't see that, just make sure you set um, this to global, okay? If it's on local, you can't turn it on. You have to have it on global. So now we can turn our snapping on and we can set it to, in my case, I'm gonna use four. You can pick whatever you want, I'm gonna pick four, I think that works great for us, okay? And also our increment snapping is set to 0 0.2. What does that mean? It means that I can increment by 0 0.2 if I hold control. This will all make sense, I promise. This will all make sense, just hang tight with me, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go to new shape here. Now there's a bunch of tools here, don't get overwhelmed. We're only gonna use a few. I'm gonna make sure that my height cuts and my width cuts down here are set to zero because all I wanna do is create a square. This is all I wanna create. And we're gonna build an entire level off of this one quad. I'm gonna grab my face selection tool and if I hold shift, as long as snapping is turned on, if I hold shift, I can extrude. Bop, 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 oh. I'm starting to see what's happening here. Maybe you don't, hang tight. Bop, bop, bop. Okay, what's he doing? Sometimes the selection is kind of weird with uh, Pro Builder, there we go. Bop, bop, bop. Hmm. Well, that's not a level, that's a big block. If I select all my faces here and I grow my selection like that, Watch what I can do. This is gonna change everything. Flip, normals, there we go, boop. And now, what do we see? An interior. Now that's not amazing, okay? Because frankly, it's just a box with inverted faces. But what do we see here? We see an interior, let me shrink our field of view here. We see an interior with a grid, a perfect grid. And we're gonna use that to just create a whole level. So this setup is the foundation to any great interior, at least using our method that we use in Twisted Tower. Now one of these faces here is not filled in, so I'm gonna fill in this. Fill hole, there we go. Now if we enter play mode here, I'm gonna turn on our ambient lighting. We don't use ambient lighting in our games, but I'm gonna do it for the purposes of this little mini tutorial. Now, if I enter play mode here, you'll see what it looks like. So we're gonna use this first person controller. So now we have an interior. The, the exciting part is the grid because we can use the grid to create a ton of cool stuff. So I can select these two here and boop, boop, boop. 
Now don't do this. Don't hold shift and just pull. Because we just lost the grid. See that? The grid is no longer there. You do it one at a time. Got a cool hallway here. Hey, what if we do a little closet here? Well, that's easy. Simple closet, you could just do this. Okay. Maybe make it elevated right here. Now it looks like crap, but you guys are gonna be shocked how quickly you can make it look like not crap with texture, and we're gonna talk all about texture, okay? Everything great, everything great, every piece of art that's great tends to start with it being good in the abstract first and then you tighten the screws later. So the same is true with um, blocking or building a level. You start with the most abstract form possible, in this case, this very simple block out, and then you scale on top of it once you like the design. Um, okay, so textures. Textures, textures, textures. Um, so I've gone ahead and found some textures um, because I didn't want to bore you guys with sourcing textures, but I got a lot of textures from uh, from Google just just because we're, we're not making a commercial game here. We're just doing a tutorial. So I Googled a lot of them, and then I also got some from textures.com. Okay, we've got a plaster with a normal map. We've got a wallpaper. We've got a wood floor with a height map and a normal map and a roughness map. And we'll talk about that in a sec. We've got a wood panel, height map, normal map, roughness map. If I double click on them, <clears throat> you'll see that they're PSDs. Look at this, isn't this cool? Our PSD has all these color adjustments, right? I could disable this and save it really quick and it'll update on the fly in Unity. I could put a smiley face on it, right? And it would update on the fly in Unity. All of these textures are the same freaking size. This is, <laughs> this is so important. Um, if they're all the same size, then they can all use the same tiling and unwrapping, we'll talk about it in a sec, but all the same tiling and sizing on that Pro Builder mesh. So it's just quickly dragging and dropping, okay? On that Pro Builder mesh. But you gotta make sure they're all the same size. All right. Now we have normal maps, and just to briefly go over this, normal maps are just a, a creative way um, to sort of code elements of the texture to make it look 3D. So certain dark parts of the blue are gonna look darker because of lighting. The lighter parts are gonna look lighter. So it makes things look 3D on the texture without actually making the mesh 3D, okay? I'll show it to you in a sec here, but you can see the normal map for the floor as well. It has this weird blue coloring, okay? So let's just go ahead and drag a material into the scene. Let's just do a plaster. All right, so it looks horrible, right? And we're gonna select by, let's see here, select by material. And I opened up my UV editor here. Don't worry about this. It looks completely chaotic and confusing for those of you who don't know how to unwrap things. And that's okay. All we're gonna do right now is we're gonna click this beautiful little button. Now it depends on what your grid size is, <clears throat> but in our case it's four. So we're gonna set the tiling to four. And now look how beautiful our plaster is perfectly mapped to our world. It's so simple, but let's make it look prettier, okay? So the way we assign texture on a Pro Builder mesh is we have to select the faces, okay? So if I get a top view here, I believe I can just do this, right? So let's grab our floors. Let's assign, as long as everything's selected here, let's select that one. So we need to make sure we're double checking here. Looks good to me. Let's go ahead and throw our wood floor on there. Ooh, not bad. Let's go ahead and bring in our wallpaper. Hey, check that out. Okay, but it's really, really boring, right? And so what you can do is you can cut up your walls to have very, um, well, I mean, just look around you. In my own office, for example, I have half of my wall as one texture 
and then the top half is another. So why not just do that here? So let's see if we can select a face ring here. Nope, a face loop. There we go, yay. Okay, we got the face loop of the entire bottom. And we'll also select this one as well. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this entire selection and we're gonna drag on a new texture that's gonna be sort of that uh, lower half wall and we'll make it wood. So we're gonna do a wood panel. See guys? And this is just a texture from textures.com. But because everything's sized properly, they all have the same exact sizing, it's so much easier to just drag them in. But um, let's just create a point light here. I'm gonna press Control Shift F and it'll be right here. I'm gonna turn off our environment lighting because it sucks. And we're just gonna create a highly intense point light here. Look how spooky. Okay. So this would, this would be great if you're making a horror game. Let's warm it up a little bit. And as you can see, now we've got normal maps showing up really clearly. Okay, normal maps are good. It's what makes this look 3D, guys. And there's a shine too. And that shine can only be generated. That specular information is only there because it has a source. So this ceiling doesn't look to me like a normal ceiling. Normal ceilings usually have some kind of a trim on the top. Okay, look around your office or your school, if you're in school right now, or um, your apartment or your home, and you'll find that you've probably got trim somewhere. Now, like a cheaper house, and I'm even looking at mine, mine doesn't have trim at the top. Trim makes it look a little bit better. Okay, so let's add a trim piece, and this isn't even 3D, guys. This is just a cut and a new texture. Pay attention. Pay attention, because what I'm about to show you is very difficult to grasp, but what you wanna do is you wanna select the perpendicular line to the trim. So I could select any of these. I could select that one or this one or this one. Whatever's perpendicular to the trim, which is gonna be this way. And then I click insert edge loop. Let me move my face here. Insert edge loop. Ooh, do you see it now? So now I can move it up to various locations. Now this is why incrementing is so important. I've got snapping of four, see that? And I also can have snapping in increments of 0.2. And I can go to the top here and then go down. And now I can select this loop and drag in a wood panel to create a trim. See? Super duper simple. I'm in a creepy mansion. See? So this is how levels are made. This is how they start. And, and this is true, honestly, guys, for me, I've found that this method works great for exteriors too. Thank you for watching and just remember if you want to go deeper into the development side of making a game and we'll also talk about the terrain tool and create beautiful simplistic terrain out exterior environments, uh, there's a link below to a workshop. It's going to take you through how to make a 3D game in 15 minutes. Uh, it's totally free. My treat to you. I uh, can't wait to see you there. Cheers.